Support comes from Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to sustainable and sound conservation of the state's forests, which support more than 41,000 Missouri jobs, resulting in a $10 billion industry. Choosewood.com. This is St. Louis on the Air from St. Louis Public Radio. I'm Elaine Cha. Police arrested about 100 protesters Saturday night after a pro-Palestinian march at Washington University. Protesters have a list of demands that include wanting the university to cut ties with Boeing, which sells weapons to Israel. Students and other activists also called for an end to the war in Gaza and for WashU to respect student voices. WashU officials say they respect freedom of expression, but that protesters violated campus policy by setting up an encampment. Joining us now to talk about what unfolded over the weekend is STLPR photojournalist Eric Lee. Welcome to St. Louis on the Air, Eric. Hi, Elaine. Now, I mentioned that about 100 people were arrested Saturday night. What were those protests like, Eric, before the arrests were made? Yeah, so protesters organized and gathered at Forest Park around 3 p.m. and then marched over onto campus towards Olin Library. The students then set up a temporary encampment holding space for speeches and uh, other chants. Students were working in the library at Olin and watching outside as these protesters gathered. It was then when police came, campus police, um, and gave protesters 10 minutes to disperse from the area. Mm -hmm. And that happened about how long after they'd been gathered there? About half an hour to 40 minutes. Okay. Now, WashU junior Max Franks criticized university leaders for their response to the march and prior arrests to another protest. The fact that it has happened before proves that the administration is not really interested in listening to student voices about any of these concerns. The administration is interested in protecting its image and its bottom line. Now, another student, WashU sophomore Charlie Weingarten, who is in two Jewish organizations and watched the protests, says police needed to be on campus. I don't agree with some of the tactics that they use, but the presence and being there and the university shutting this down and making it very clear that behavior like this would not be allowed on our campus, I think was incredibly important. So we heard from two students who were on campus, but what was the the feeling or the vibe like on the campus before police came and then after they arrived? Yeah, students were mostly very peaceful, holding signs. We saw medical students or people in lab coats. We saw uh, faculty members even coming out and supporting students. Um, Green Party presidential candidate Jill Stein came. Um, St. Louis Alderwoman Elisa Saunier was there, mm-hmm. and Board of Alderwoman President Megan Green as well, um, helping watch and, and kind of facilitate with students and be a mediary between uh, police and the student body. Was there anything about the the mood that felt adversarial or... I mean, was was it like a, a community gathering kind of uh, atmosphere? Yeah, it definitely felt like a community gathering with uh, the number of organizers leading chants, um, the, the diversity of the students and, and campus members who were there as well. Um, it was very peaceful, I, I believe, until police came and uh, gave the order to disperse. And that's when um, the group picked up all their tents and supplies and actually marched through Brookings Hall towards Tisch Park Mm -hmm. and to set up a more permanent, or at least attempt to set up a more permanent encampment. Mm -hmm. Now, Washington University Chancellor Andrew Martin issued a statement this morning, and he said that 23 WashU students were arrested and at least four employees. I mean, beyond that, Eric, what was the gist of what the chancellor said? Yeah, the chancellor largely echoed uh, some of the original statement that was put out on Saturday night after uh, all the arrests that were made, um, saying that these students and and this protest was a danger to campus and against student conduct. Uh, We do know those 23 students and four faculty are facing um, conduct review by the university, as well as um, those outside of the university are facing trespassing charges. When you were there 
among uh, among people in the crowd, sometimes media is not welcome mm -hmm. in settings like that. Um, could people tell that you were with St. Louis Public Radio? Were they wanting to talk with you? Um, what were what were the responses to media presence being there? Yeah. Media was definitely welcomed uh, amongst the protests. I mean, as we've seen across other universities, sometimes media isn't uh, able to gain access, whether that be the school um, or the students or, or demonstrators that are organizing. Um, for this instance at Wash U, um, organizers welcomed us and wanted us um, to interview students, interview faculty, um, and police were, were very open to uh, also media being present. Um, it didn't really interfere with our process. But it was actually officials from the university who kind of came up to media, uh, me specifically as well, asking for identification and, and asking if we had permission to be on campus and that we faced potential trespassing charges if, if we were arrested as mm -hmm. well. Now, you captured some quite vivid photography of what was going on. What was it that stood out to you, Eric? Yeah, I, I've covered um, several protests for George Floyd and also um, looking at January 6th, uh, the United States Capitol, um, and just being present and, and feeling the energy from the crowd and, and uh, the uh, approach against police. Um, these demonstrators were interlocking arms and protecting those inside who wanted to stay overnight. Uh, many were carrying si uh, signs and art, um, leading chants with drums. Um, as demonstrators went from Olin Park through Brookings, it began to rain and, and the sun was shining. And um, it was a ve very beautiful moment, too, where Muslim community members were praying. But right behind them were jail vans from University City and Richmond Heights. Um, and it's, it creates this juxtaposition between the two of something that is very peaceful and mindful um, with something so violent and, and you know, attempting to create a, a prison uh, scene. And so uh, this, this protest was very visual. Mm -hmm. Now, the university has temporarily suspended all students who were involved. What is it that we know about that, Eric? Yeah, these... 23 students will be suspended. Um, four faculty members, their their positions with the school will also be um, analyzed. The claim from the chancellor was saying that these um, students also led to injuries of three officers, such as concussion, a groin injury, and a broken finger. Eric Lee is a photojournalist at St. Louis Public Radio. Thank you. Thank you. This episode was produced and engineered by our executive producer, Alex Hoyer. Podcast design by Aaron Dorr. St. Louis on the Air is a production of St. Louis Public Radio. Understanding starts here. St. Louis on the Air proudly supports local artists by using music from Life Creative Group. Do you find yourself regularly listening to episodes of St. Louis on the Air? Suggest us to a friend you think might enjoy our conversations. And leave us a review and rating on Apple Podcasts on the App Store. It's the simplest way to help people discover our show. Thanks. St. Louis Public Radio is a member-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at ChooseWood.com.